now move on to our third guest speaker, Mr. Chandra Kumar, an ambitious and accomplished man focused on creating a better digital future for organizations through his startup ventures in digital transformation, artificial intelligence, and digital marketing. Trained as a consultant, he has a unique 23-year background in strategy, market making, business development, and program management of complex tech projects, ranging up to $1 billion. Previously, he was the CDO at Dell EMC, transformation leader at IBM, and client partner with Cognizant. He has been a recipient of the Gold Award for Digital Transformation Initiatives and Global Best Sales Team Member. He teaches in-demand courses in artificial intelligence, blockchain, digital marketing, and CRM across Singapore, India, and other countries. He also has prestigious certifications in AI, strategy, leadership, and innovation management. We're delighted to have him here today. So without further ado, I will pass the session over to Mr. Chandra Kumar. Okay. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. It's always a pleasure to talk with the uh, GIS uh, students, uh, the faculty principal. Um, I'm uh, also a faculty. I teach artificial intelligence to our uh, school students uh, in Singapore and we also in the uh, India GIS uh, schools. Um, I would like to keep it quite simple today. I guess uh, there's a lot of AI, a lot of biotechnology work, uh, which has been displayed till now fantastic i've been also been learning quite a bit in the past 30 minutes or so um, so essentially i would uh, like to uh, talk about what are the implications of uh, artificial intelligence in tackling uh, climate change um, for those of you who do not know us uh, i am the founder and ceo of a company called wisely wise from uh, singapore and uh, without uh, further ado let's look at what is the impact of artificial intelligence now, before we get started, I would want each of you to um, think about one question. Does AI change our lives in a positive way or in a negative way? Or do you feel uh, neutral about uh, this? Because uh, the, um, the question whenever a new technology comes up, whenever there is a new industrial revolution which comes up, it's always whether it is going to change our lives. And we are always afraid whether it will be uh, in a negative way, right? Um, in, in terms of my experience with students till now, the students have always been very positive. It's uh, shown up in the way that they have trained themselves in artificial intelligence, in the way that they have gone ahead and designed artificial intelligence uh, applications. And uh, we do this right from the third standard onwards. So I'm pleasantly surprised about the social thinking, the responsibility that students have shown. So AI will definitely change our lives in a very positive way. Um, do you know that more Indians actually die cleaning sewers than fighting terrorists in Kashmir? Uh, sounds quite uh, uh, tragic, right? Um, essentially, what we are looking at is that we are focusing on a lot of problems. We are definitely looking at a lot of headlines. But uh, some of the problems, including climate change, are something that we are just uh, not neglecting, and which is pretty much not really good for the long run. Um, providing some statistics, right? This particular job is called the deadliest job in India. The, the statistics are quite alarming. One worker dies every five days, and there are millions of worker, workers across India who are actually being exposed to toxic gases, infectious diseases, and of course, there's the social stigma around um, this particular job. Now, while uh, this is also in a way related to the, the climate, uh, the people, the artificial intelligence, uh, none of us really did anything about it. But I would like to point you out to a set of students uh, who actually created an AI robot called Bandicoot. And their whole vision was changing manhole to robohole. And the statistics, which are quite uh, heartwarming, are that this particular robot can clean a manhole in 20 to 45 minutes compared to three hours by a worker. And it can actually clean about 250 manholes in a month. So it basically means this set of students are using AI to saving lives, which is what I would want each of you on this call to start thinking about in terms of AI, which is being called as the industrial revolution. Are we just going to use it for fun purposes as robots which can serve as food or drones which can actually take photographs? Or are we going to use it to tackle much larger problems? 
are we supposed to be inspired by this set of students and look at how we can actually improve our climate for a better future so uh, in in fact when we teach ai we make it a point i've just marked it in red here when we talk about artificial intelligence in society we talk about ai bias ethics what does the government do for ai and of course we talk about climate change uh, as well in a big way so essentially uh, i heard some of the speakers talk about ai so i'm sure there's a lot of technical knowledge about ai which has uh, been imparted till now so fundamentally i would like to refresh so ai is essentially intelligence demonstrated by machines right it's in contrast to the natural intelligence that each of us uh, display and typically we classify the various applications either as conversational artificial intelligence natural language processing uh, machine learning which includes everything from deep learning computer vision and of course in terms of robotics and uh, while we see a lot of things like this uh, driverless cars or self driving cars as more as fancy technology we will also in a quick second see how this actually contributes for a better climate uh, uh, change and uh, i would like to draw your attention to the sustainable development goals of the united nations right and we have a lot of goals under that we specifically for the purpose of this presentation let's look at goal 30 which is around climate uh, action um we know based on the work which has been done by the various uh, committees and of the un that the average global temperature has actually risen up by about 0.85 degree centigrade um oceans have warmed the amount of snow and ice have diminished and sea levels are rising which puts under risk many countries including singapore maldives uh, some of the well known countries which uh, face uh, risk because of the sea level rising we are also of course quite exposed in terms of the problems due to emissions of greenhouse uh, gases and the temperature increasing and consequently what's the impact on um, uh, human beings uh, we also are looking at that not only are emissions growing they are also growing much faster in the previous decade as opposed to the decades much earlier so we are actually looking at how do you really uh, have a sustainable society developing over a period of time and whether ai could potentially be a solution for this it cannot be the be all and end all because we also have to look at things like our personal uh, consumption but we are also looking at saying larger problems can we be solved using artificial intelligence now without a direction of course ai can go in you know any sort of solution so we will look at the specific targets which have been set out over here so essentially we are looking at how uh we can integrate climate change measures into national policies how do you improve awareness uh, education around climate change how do we actually implement the various commitments take, taken by the various developed country parties uh how do we promote mechanisms for raising capacity for uh, climate change related planning and management right while these are well very well established uh, targets for goal 13 under the sustainable development goals we will look at uh, whether ai can actually help us in meeting these targets and why ai is very well uh, suited for this particular uh, global issue okay so i'm going to look at uh, several ways as to how ai can help tackle climate change um we are looking at that there are five territories uh, for technological innovations one is in terms of power and electricity generation fundamentally because these uh, account for about 25% of all greenhouse emissions we look at transportation as the next uh, sector because this represents 23% of all global related carbon dioxide emissions then food and its supply chain represents 25% of global emissions we are also looking at the newer uh, sort of studies where we say that instead of uh, meat based burgers if we have a plant based burgers it generates a whopping 90% less greenhouse emissions 46% less energy and 99% less impact on water scarcity and 93% less impact on land use next we look at manufacturing as the next sector fundamentally because this represent 30% of global related carbon dioxide emissions and of course buildings and cities where we live they represent 20% of global emissions right now what happens when we use ai and why ai is a good candidate uh, fundamentally answering my own question that i posed few minutes back uh, ai is obviously uh, running measurement and predictions on steroids 
while we do have a lot of software and automation till now, what AI really helps us do is it, it helps us look at data in different patterns, huge volumes of data, real time data, and it also allows us to slice and dice the data in multiple ways to um, analyze it, classify, predict, and it allows us to come out with much more significant insights, right? And of course, we look at cognitive superpowers that AI brings in in terms of computer vision uh, and uh, other things in terms of uh, um, what can call seeing, hearing, reading, and understanding. So we are going to use remote sensing data to uh, really look at what sort of various AI solutions can actually be brought for climate change. So let's look at quickly about 10 examples of the AI use cases. One, we can build better client models. So the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is uh, using AI to build better predictions of extreme weather events like hurricanes. And we look at how we can increase monitoring, measuring and accountability of pollutants. So AI is being used to automatically analyze data from IoT uh, sensors and also use the remote sensing data to identify pollutants such as ground level ozone. We also can use AI to optimize traffic flow and make smarter cities. Now, a simple example of that is the study in India by McKinsey, which states that smart rubbish bins are being trialed that, so that the rubbish trucks do not pick up if the bins are not 75% full. This means lesser uh, emissions due to the uh, trucks not running and only having a very, very cost effective and a more efficient way of uh, picking up these various rubbish bins. It can be used to improve building energy uh, consumption um, because intelligence, uh, intelligent AI can measure, predict and control uh, heating and cooling systems. So this can actually achieve significant energy savings, double digit energy savings, as you can see in this particular paragraph. Uh, in fact, um, we uh, uh, see that uh, uh, companies like Google and Facebook are aggressively looking at how they can um, have what you can call more as being carbon neutral companies over the next decade or so. Uh, we also look at uh, how AI can help roll out autonomous trucks because this can help uh, attain a 15% reduction in fuel consumption over uh, human operators. We just saw a slide of uh, the driverless uh, cars and if we can apply the same principles to get uh, autonomous trucks on the roads, this can actually help us in reducing the fuel consumption, reducing in terms of the uh, trucks uh, life on the roads uh, in the sense that we can use them for much longer periods. We also look at how AI can help better match electricity supply and uh, demand. So this ensures again that the uh, value of the electricity is increased. So for example, Google's DeepMind the AI has actually developed a network system which increases the value of wind power by more than 20%. So making energy being very optimal is quite key in terms of being successful in climate change. The seventh one is in terms of improving efficiency of logistics and supply chain. So increasingly AI is being used to look at what are the various uh, uh, demand levels which are happening in international supply chain. Of course, in the event of COVID, we are seeing supply chains getting disrupted. We may see more of local supply chains as opposed to international supply chain. In either of the cases, whether we look at local supply chains or international supply chains, we would see that AI will be used by most companies in terms of predicting uh, the accuracy with which to selling products, uh, delivering the products, and of course, ensuring that the last mile logistics are covered using uh, AI. Now, these are not small problems which can be solved manually, and uh, these are also not problems which can be solved using existing automation, for example, using ERP systems. We can only use powerful systems like AI to actually tackle this sort of uh, efficiency problems. The eighth one is in terms of optimizing the food supply chain and improving agricultural uh, yields. Uh, we see that the example of Microsoft working with Indian farmers to achieving up to 30% higher yields using machine learning advice. Essentially, the advice uh, uh, banks on what would be the best time to sow crops and whether that will lead as to better yields and higher yields for these various farm crops. The ninth one is in terms of improving manufacturing efficiency. 
by analyzing and improving manufacturing processes. So in the example of uh, turbine combustion, we could, we could make it more efficient. We could reduce errors and energy wastage on the production line. And of course, we could use advanced robotics for improving production efficiency. The tenth one and the final one, which I'm going to share now is in terms of how do we help consumers reduce their carbon footprint, right? I'm sure each of us use various tracker devices, including our smartphone, in terms of what is our usage of, um, uh, let's say, our uh, smart devices, whether our battery is being fully charged. But going a bit further, we can also use AI, where we can look at what is our carbon footprint, right? Um, the lady, uh, the picture that you see on screen is based on a short film by Anne Catherine Bayer, who imagined a world, right? Where each of us are allotted credit points, that is environment credit points based on our behavior and its impact on sustainability. So this could also be at a grassroots level that AI can give us enormous feedback via our smartphone devices or maybe other IoT devices based on which we can take our calls in terms of reducing the carbon uh, footprint. So does technology alone provide all the answers? Does AI alone uh, provide all the solutions? Now the answer is of course technology alone will not be enough and I don't think it's also responsible enough for us to only depend on AI. So we also have to individually look at what is our consumption pattern? How do we actually look at what is it that we eat, how we travel and how we live. So for example, the companies that I used to work in, we used to have posters in our canteen which used to say, take what you eat and eat what you take. So essentially guiding the employees in terms of not wasting food and at the same time, not encouraging to eat everything on the plate as well to reduce obesity levels. We also have to, of course, look at uh, more in terms of governmental policies, regulatory uh, policies, and also in terms of accords like the 2015 Paris uh, Climate Accord. We also have to look at what are the financial incentives which are out over there. Uh, what is a better type of capitalism as what has actually been mentioned uh, by the World Economic Forum. So in essence, we have seen what is AI, why AI is a very good candidate to tackle climate change. We looked at the various the 10 specific uh, ways in which AI can uh, tackle climate change. We also looked at uh, what are the additional factors that we have to take into consideration apart from artificial intelligence type technology solutions to manage climate change. So I hope I have given you a more concise and more holistic view of uh, AI and the part it plays in climate change. For those of you who are quite interested in terms of going into each of the 10 points and looking at saying that, can I gain the technology knowledge as to how uh, this AI is impacting climate change? I would recommend the white paper out here. Maybe I can share the link. Uh, this is actually a white paper around uh, how do you tackle climate change with uh, machine learning? It takes into consideration multiple factors uh, in terms of electricity systems, transportation, buildings and cities, the areas that I just covered in my presentation and also looks at specifically what are the various technologies, how they come together holistically to address these various facets of uh, climate change. So with that, I will uh, end my presentation. I will take any questions uh, if they are from the uh, audience. So thank you, Mr. Chandrakumar. Your endless knowledge and expertise was valuable to hear.